Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer Channel. Today I'm going to go straight to the point and tell you the three steps you should be following to land your first iOS developer job, or any developer job for that matter actually. Just replace every time I say iOS with whatever platform you're trying to learn. And use these as a guideline through your whole process of learning up to the point of getting your first job. Number one, learn the basics through a comprehensive and well-constructed course. What I mean by that is search for a course teaching iOS and Swift that will take you through most of the common concepts that will come up when working with the iOS platform. See it as your initial overview of the platform or the technology you want to be learning. There's plenty of paid and free courses around that will achieve just that, but if you're feeling a bit lost, you can check out this video that I'll share somewhere on the screen right now that shares a brief review of three courses I've personally used to learn iOS, and you can't really go wrong with any of them. The most important part is that you just pick one and go through the whole course because these courses were thought of and built to give a good coverage of most of the basic stuff you'll run into when you develop your own projects. And you're much less likely to have big knowledge gaps by going through that kind of course than by doing slightly more random tutorials here and there, possibly even coming from different sources that aren't necessarily meant to go together and give you a comprehensive understanding of the platform. It also gives you a start and most importantly, a clear finish to your initial learning phase, which brings me to my second point and the most important one by far. Once you're done learning the basics and you've built an initial understanding of what you're trying to learn through handheld tutorials, start your own projects to apply the information you've just learned. It doesn't have to be anything groundbreaking, it can be recycled ideas, and that doesn't really matter at all. Just come up with an idea on your own and build it from scratch. That means Follow as many new tutorials as you need, but do it in a matter that aims towards a specific goal that you came up with on your own. Look back at code you've written through that initial course phase. Just don't follow a single tutorial from start to finish, copying every single line of code to build a project with basically none of your own input and own research. First of all, it will give you a taste of what it's actually like working as a developer, piecing together bits of knowledge you already have looking up any information to fill in any of the gaps you might have and ultimately creating something completely new. You'll learn tons from going through that process and through many iterations of going back to look at what you've learned in past tutorials, you'll actually start assimilating the information you've started learning. But beyond that, it will also help you build a foundation of topics you can talk about with future employers and in interviews. This is the goal of this video, right? Prepare you to land a job. Well, in those interviews you'll eventually take, especially as a junior, you'll be looking for ways to display your current understanding and what you're capable of as a developer. With that in mind, tutorials and courses won't really get you that far because even if you were super involved in them and tried to understand them as much as possible, it's hard for someone interviewing you to make a distinction between that or just you cruising through the tutorials mindlessly and not really learning anything. When talking about your own projects instead and showcasing them, you'll be able to discuss what you found easy in them, what you found difficult, why you did something one way rather than another, the problem solving that was involved, or what you could do better if you started over, and plenty of other topics that will actually get you into the meat of the subject to prove that you've put in the work, which is really unlike what you would be able to do when just talking about the tutorials you've followed and the courses you've taken. And on top of that, you'll have some practice behind your belt if you need to do any take-home projects for interviews. And finally, step three. Once you've built a couple projects you feel comfortable talking about and showcasing, in many cases, you won't have a choice but to learn at least some basic algorithm questions and concepts. Like it or not, the fact of the matter is, in many cases these days, even if your development job has nothing to do with heavy algorithm and optimization work, a part of the interview process will have some of it. So pick up a coding slash algorithm question book like Cracking the Coding Interview. If you're applying for iOS jobs, Paul Hudson from Hacking with Swift also has a fantastic book of programming challenges specifically for Swift. Or just check out one of the many websites that offer algorithm questions and practice through these. Especially as a junior and if you're not targeting huge companies, that algorithm knowledge doesn't even have to be that big. Just the basics will get you through a lot and you'll be surprised at how often you actually end up using some of the ideas to fix some problems during your job. So through these three steps, you'll have built a basic understanding of the platform you're trying to learn through a solid foundation level course. You'll have applied some of these concepts to your own projects and expanded upon them with new ideas so you can complete these projects. You'll have built a portfolio that you can talk about and showcase to demonstrate everything you've learned to potential employers. and. Finally, you'll have built a basic understanding of algorithm questions and ideas that can come up during interviews, but during your job as well. 
With those three steps in mind, you have everything you need to become a developer, to at least get your foot in the door and to have solid interviews, and to eventually get a job in the field if you try hard enough. Remember, it's not a sprint, and it's obviously downplaying it a little bit to separate it in only three steps like this. Just keep these ideas in mind and use them as guidelines as you're working through your preparation and learning process. Work at your own pace with concrete goals in mind and with purpose. You'll end up progressing and will be ready much faster than if you were just aimlessly learning a bit more randomly. So anyways, hopefully this was useful to some of you let me know of any comments you have down below and we'll see you all in the next video and until then take care